When most people think of billionaires, they probably picture gold toilet seats, silver spoons, and sitting in the lap of luxury. And sometimes that vision is accurate. Other times, however, it ignores the section of the wealthy that didn't just inherit their cash. We're not just talking about those that didn't start off with billions, but instead, those that didn't even start off with hundreds. In fact, they started off at the complete opposite end of the wealth spectrum. They were dirt poor. Stay tuned to number one to find out which billionaire still flies commercial. Number 10. Sheldon Adelson With a current net worth of over $38 billion as of December 2017, Sheldon Adelson is filthy rich. However, no matter how thick his wallet becomes, he remains quite the amazing philanthropist. From political donations to supporting Jewish heritage organizations, Adelson is generous towards the causes he holds dear. Perhaps it is due to his less than glamorous childhood that he feels the need to never stop giving. His parents were poor Jewish immigrants of Lithuanian and Welsh descent that settled in Dorchester, Massachusetts. For those that don't know Dorchester, let's just say it was the exact opposite of a rich community. Immigrants stuck with their own, the Irish living near the Irish, and the Jewish families living near other Jewish families. Adelson's dad was a cab driver, and the family of six had to share one bedroom. That had to have gotten awkward. As was normal for that time, kids started to take on odd jobs when they were young to help support their family. But Adelson did this with a twist. For it seems that even at a young age, business was in his blood. When he was just 12 years old, he turned an ordinary paper route into something bigger, borrowing money from his uncle to pay for the right to sell papers on busy street corners. Later, Adelson was a college dropout who tried many jobs over the years, from packaging toiletries to being a court reporter to even opening a tour business. But he finally found his success when he started Comdex, a tech conference and trade show. It was all the way up from there, including taking over the Las Vegas Sands Resort and Casino. Though his net worth may fluctuate with the economy, something tells us Sheldon Adelson isn't going to let that stop him. Number 9. Jean-Paul de Joria If there was a picture for what rags to riches meant, it would have to be that of Jean-Paul de Joria. This man has quite the story. His parents were European immigrants that settled in Los Angeles, California. They divorced when he was two, leaving his mother to raise him and his brother. He was only nine when he started working to help out his mom. Like most kids at the time, he sold newspapers. However, he had a less than common job of selling Christmas cards. But unfortunately, the extra work him and his brother did was not enough, and his mom had to put them in foster care. Initially, the path that DeJoria took was a dark one. While in foster care, DeJoria joined a gang. And it was during this time that a teacher allegedly told him he would never be successful in life. While some might hear that and be hurt, DeJoria became motivated. After graduating high school, he joined the Navy. But just because his attitude had changed didn't mean his luck had. He still struggled to make ends meet, taking on jobs as a janitor, gas station attendant, and selling encyclopedias. Things were so tight that at times he was homeless and sleeping in his car. And after his first wife left him and his infant son, his poor baby was homeless too. It was then that he managed to get a small loan from the bank with Paul Mitchell to start the John Paul Mitchell system. DeJoria went around selling the shampoo door to door. They had such little money that the labels for their product were printed in black and white, simply because they could not afford color. Luckily, the risk paid off, and this was the start of his success. The line of hair care products is beyond famous now, and DeJoria also has a line of tequila you might recognize, Patron Spirits. And of course, he hasn't forgotten his roots. DeJoria makes sure to give time and money from his $3.3 billion to others, with one of his main interests being the environment. He was even named 2017 Philanthropist of the Year by Variety Magazine. Number 8. David Murdoch David Murdoch was born in 1923 and is still kicking it. And by still kicking, we mean tougher and more energetic than people half of his age. 
He maintains an insanely healthy diet, never minces words, and lives life to the fullest every day. He is worth $2.9 billion and doesn't seem to have a main philanthropic interest aside from research into healthy living, but Murdoch's life started off much differently than what you see today. He was born in Ohio, where his dad was a traveling salesman who was frequently away due to his job. His mother did laundry and cleaned to make some money, and Murdoch was very close to her. In fact, her death from cancer when he was only 17 years old was one of the moments that led him to being so health conscious. He dropped out of school at 14, realizing later in life his struggles were from dyslexia. After a stint in the army, Murdoch was met with more hard times. He had so little money that at one point, he was sleeping under a bush in the park at night. A friend who worked at a diner would sneak him coffee sometimes, which ended up being just the thing to change his life. A customer of the diner, who happened to work for a loan company, found out that he was a veteran and decided to help him. He was able to collect some money for Murdoch to get a start, and it was only uphill from there. Murdoch bought and flipped a diner, then moved west and continued his real estate flipping venture. Murdoch is most famous for his involvement with the Dole Food Company, which is quite a ways from a park bush in Ohio. Number 7. Oprah Winfrey Unless you're living under a rock, you've probably heard of Oprah Winfrey. But if you don't know her life story, then get ready for a doozy. She was born on a farm in Mississippi. Her parents weren't married and split up, followed by Winfrey's mom moving to find work leaving her in the care of her grandmother. Money was so scarce that Winfrey's clothes were sometimes made from potato sacks. But what her grandmother lacked financially, she made up for in love and learning. She taught Oprah to read early, leading to Winfrey skipping grades later in school. When she was six, her grandma became ill and she had to live with her mother back in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You would think that this would have been a happy moment for the family, but from there, her life in potato sacks on the farm would look like a paradise. Her next eight years were filled with bouncing between her parents, numerous rapes by family members, and a teenage pregnancy from one of those rapes. Though the baby did not survive, she was living safely with her father and she used this as her chance to start making changes. Oprah Winfrey went on to be on local radio, in a beauty pageant, and later became involved in the news where one Baltimore TV producer told her that she was unfit for television news. Race became another hurdle for her to deal with, but we all know the eventual success she found. Her net worth is $2.8 billion. But more importantly, she used her wealth and fame to inspire and help other young women. Number 6. Howard Schultz Howard Schultz went from the Brooklyn Projects to a man worth $2.9 billion. Schultz was always aware that he lived in the housing projects and has been quoted as saying he wished as a child that he could climb over the fence to the greener grass. But his life was mostly affected by his father, a man that worked tirelessly for little money and little respect. He felt it broke his dad and became determined not to let it happen to him. His athletic ability became his route out of the projects. He earned a football scholarship and kept moving up from there. His professional life was fine for a while, not necessarily a struggle, but also not finding the profound success he had always dreamed of. He was selling European coffee makers when he came across a small Seattle-based coffee company, you might have heard of them, Starbucks. Over the years, his level of involvement with the company has changed, but it made him the billionaire he is today, and to top it off, he believes in giving back. He speaks openly about the need to support those that need help in life. He'll interview and organize gatherings with Starbucks employees of all ranks to hear what concerns them in life. It seems he is trying to bring the whole country up and out of the projects with him. Number 5. Leonardo Del Vecchio If you're sitting at home trying to think of how to make your own billion, the topic of eyewear probably doesn't spring to mind. And yet, that's how Leonardo Del Vecchio became the billionaire he is today. And we're not just talking about a measly one or two billion, we're talking about $18.7 billion. He's the owner and founder of Luxottica, one of the leading eyeglass companies in the world. Del Vecchio was born in Milan, Italy and raised by his mother. 
They were so poor, however, that she eventually had to send him to live in an orphanage with nuns for seven years. Del Vecchio later needed help to support his mom and get a job as an assistant tool manufacturer. He went on to take night classes in industrial engineering while working during the day and even lost part of his index finger when he was working in the factory as a child. Yet he used his knowledge and passion to succeed in a field that is surprisingly competitive. Number 4. Larry Ellison Sometimes when you hear a number like $61.2 billion, you think it's so huge that one person can't possibly have that much money. And if you thought that, you'd be wrong. Larry Ellison was born in Brooklyn, New York, but his single mother eventually couldn't afford to take care of him, so he was sent to Chicago, Illinois to live with his aunt and uncle. Life on the south side of the Windy City wasn't easy. Money was tight and the living space was tighter. It was in high school that Ellison's aunt and adoptive mother died, so he dropped out of high school and headed to California. For nearly a decade, Ellison did odd jobs to make ends meet. Finally, he was able to start a software development company called Oracle, which is when his luck turned around. His involvement with the company has changed over time, but it became the start of his billions. He has so much money now that he owns nearly all of the island of Lanai on the Hawaiian Islands. But he does give back. He's given $200 million to cancer research, and that was just one of his many donations. Number 3. Roman Abramovich Billionaires, as we are learning, can come from all walks of life. But we'll admit we probably never thought of the sub-Arctic region of northern Russia. But lo and behold, it did produce a billionaire, Roman Abramovich. He was born into poverty, and when he was two years old, he was orphaned, which led him to being raised by other family members he had, who apparently lived in sub-Arctic Russia. Abramovich was drafted into the Russian army and afterward did various odd jobs to make ends meet. He finally managed to save enough money to start a business, and the rest, as they say, is history. Worth $9.8 billion, he is an expert in business and has become involved in politics as well. He has donated more to charity than any other Russian, and it's been to good causes like hospitals and schools. There are rumors that Abramovich did not always use the most honest means to add to his billions, and although we don't know what the true story is there, we do know that the freezing cold tales of his childhood are true. Number 2. Ingvar Komprad Anyone from college students to newlyweds has probably shopped at an IKEA furniture store, and Ingvar Komprad is the main man responsible for that. Perhaps the most interesting part here is that Komprad's poor childhood on a family farm stuck with him, since he's continued his penny-pinching ways to this day. We don't mean in regards to how he pays his employees, but more in terms of how he lives his own life. Despite being worth $6 billion, he drove the same car for nearly two decades and still flies commercial. Comprod started making money at the tender age of six years old when he sold matches to his neighbors. He later started riding his bike door to door to sell a plethora of things from pencils to jewelry. School was hard for Comprod as he also dealt with dyslexia, but his hard work paid off for him. When he graduated, his father presented him with a small saved up reward for all of his hard work. Comprod took that money and started his business. Initially, it was small, selling things like picture frames, but it eventually turned into the superstore that it is today. And not only that, but IKEA employees are happy. Comprod pays them very well, encourages them to wear casual and comfy clothes to work, and refers to them as his co-workers. Number 1. Jack Ma Alibaba is an online marketplace that's become a household name, and it was all started by Jack Ma. He was born in China to parents who were song and storytellers. They didn't have much money. So as Ma got older, he traveled early in the mornings to Hangzhou to offer city tours in exchange for learning some English words. He knew that education was more valuable than money. It took him three tries to pass a college entrance exam, but he finally did it. Later, he became a teacher and the students loved him. His knowledge helped him start a translation business which involved him taking trips to America to help a company. 
But during his trip, he became fascinated with the internet and soon realized there was a lack of inventory available to China. After a few failed business attempts, Ma gathered some of his friends to pitch the idea of Alibaba and, well, did we mention that Alibaba has made him worth $37.9 billion? No big deal. So what did you think? Tell us your favorite rags to riches story in the comments below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for more great content. We'll see ya!